Face app answers questions about privacy concerns, Google blocks incognito mode detection, and Oakland bans facial recognition technology. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for July 23rd, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. It's time for a quick or long this week shout out. This one goes out to Daniel, Thad, Greg, Bess, Joe, Scott, Eric, Brad, Brian, Sloan, Clyde, George, Theo, Michael, Des, Costi, Kenneth, Ryan, Guy, Maxime, Gareth, Jay, Richard, Riley, Scott, Andrew, Joaquim, Carl, Ron, Doug, Sharon, Ryan, Lestatic, Con, Platypus Woodworks, love the name, Justin, Jamie, Thomas, Robert, Allen, Martin, William, BC, Speedbump, Jeffrey, Tortuga, Russell, Cano, Dan, Lane, Gregory, Emmanuel, Vince, Sean, KAC, Dr. Andrew R., Chris, Kelly, Saista P7, hopefully I said that right, Thomas, Edsel, and Colin, who joined the Patreon team this week. Whew. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And now, on to the news. I am sure that you have seen photos of your friends, but much older than they currently are. They are using FaceApp, which is an application developed by Russia-based Wireless Lab, which uses AI to create an older version of yourself based on a selfie. It has gone viral with people posting their hashtag age challenge photos across the web. Personally, I am very skeptical of any app that goes viral and rightfully so. In the case of FaceApp, concern was raised over their handling of photos on FaceApp servers. When you upload a photo to FaceApp, that photo is sent to their server. Most photos are processed in the cloud, but no photos are uploaded that were not chosen by the user. Now, while one software developer did claim that all of your camera roll photos are uploaded, it turns out that is not actually true. Security pros were still concerned, though, that the app does not give you a way to delete photos from their servers, though FaceApp states that most, not all, images are deleted from their server within two days of the upload date. That most part kind of concerns me. They also told TechCrunch that users can request all of their data to be removed. FaceApp does suggest using the settings, support, report a bug menu, and then adding privacy to the subject line for fastest removal of all the data if a user wants their information removed. FaceApp also states that they do not sell or share data and that you don't have to log in to use the image AI processing. But that's about where the positive part ends. The terms also state that you hand over license for FaceApp to display the photos worldwide, and they also get access to your location data. The location data can be shared with third parties and is used for targeted advertising. Anytime photos are shared, those could include your username, location, or profile photo. Now, the biggest concern for many is the fact that the company is based in Russia, and users are willingly uploading selfies to the app in the time of facial recognition and deep fakes. With that said, there is no data showing that the app is actually sharing photos with the Kremlin, and according to FaceApp, the processing is actually done on AWS and Google Cloud servers. The U.S. government does have concerns, though. The Democratic National Committee sent out a memo to the campaign to not use the application due to security concerns. Along with this, Senator Minority Leader Chuck Schumer sent a letter to the FBI and the FTC asking for an investigation into the application. Schumer is specifically concerned about both the protection of the data being aggregated, as well as whether users are actually aware of who has access to it. In the big scheme of things, this kind of investigation investigation could be targeted towards a number of social media websites and apps, since all of them kind of have similar policies and terms. Now, with all of this said, we have seen apps with sketchy terms of service before. Generally, it's not until something goes viral that it's called out on being a risky service, at which point I feel like it's a little bit too late. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Google updated Chrome to version 76, and with that, they also closed a loophole that many online publishers were using to detect if people were using incognito mode. Incognito mode allows you to browse the web without sites appearing in your search history, and it keeps websites from leaving traces, like cookies, on your device. Some sites, like publishers who have paywalls after you've clicked on a certain number of articles or pages, have used the loophole to deter metered paywall circumvention by blocking 
access if you are browsing in incognito mode. These sites usually offer or allow you to read a set amount of articles before blocking them from accessing those. This is inherently bad design as they rely on cookies or trackers, which can be deleted from a user's computer pretty easily or circumvented with a private browser. Now the loophole was in Chrome's file system API, which is disabled completely in incognito mode. This ensures that activity traces aren't left on the device, but sites could still check the availability of the file system API from a visitor. Now, if they see that the API wasn't there at all, this was possible proof that a user was using incognito mode. Chrome 76 modifies the way file system API is used, so after it's released on July 30th, sites will not be able to detect if it is actually missing. Google recommends in their post that publishers try to find a way to build trust with potential subscribers that don't circumvent the core principles of private browsing because Google intends and pledges to close any other loopholes found that allow for detection of incognito mode. Now, incognito mode is not perfect either. While it does not save your browsing history, cookies, or site data like information entered into forms, activity can still be seen by your employer, your ISP, or a website that you may visit. Incognito mode used with other services like a VPN can definitely help tighten security measures. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. For a very limited time, anyone who joins my team of supporters will get a personalized thank you video sent directly from me to you. Also, I decided to start a security and privacy audio podcast as part of the ThreatWire feed. That's gonna be publicly available, but that is my next Patreon goal, so if you wanna help, check out my page. And also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, they're adorable, keep them coming. After a swift vote on Tuesday last week, Oakland, California became the third major city in the U.S. to ban the use of facial recognition by law enforcement, citing a breach of citizen civil liberties. San Francisco was the first to ban the technology in May, with Somerville City in Massachusetts following right after. The Oakland City Council President Rebecca Kaplan stated the reason for the vote down was limitation of the technology, a lack of standards for implementation, and potential potential use in persecution of minorities. A second and final vote is scheduled for September 17th, but it will likely have a similar turnout given that this one was 8 to 1. According to CBS SF Bay Area, research was included in this verdict showing that facial recognition technology is not as accurate for women and POCs, particularly black women who were inaccurately identified throughout the study. Oakland police argued against the verdict, stating that facial recognition should be permitted and only banned for real-time applications, such as during active protests or scanning. Now, this comes to light at the same time that the U.S. House of Representatives passed an amendment to the Intelligent Authorization Act for 2020 that requires the Director of National Intelligence to report on government usage of facial recognition technology. Now, since this facial recognition technology is becoming more mainstream of a topic, a map located at banfacialrecognition.com was created to give you an interactive look at which cities and municipalities currently have bans, legislation, or the technology in place. And that link is below in the description. And I have never been prouder of being a civilian that lives in the Bay Area. Go Oakland. And with that, don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Shanna Morse, and I will see you on the internet.